Okay, so this is 3.2a of geometry. We've got quite a few theorems in this section. So, theorem 2.1, vertical angles theorem, says that vertical angles are congruent. So, 2 and 4 are congruent, and 3 and 1 are congruent. Postulate 3.1, I wouldn't write this whole paragraph. For any of these theorems and postulates, I would just write the if-then with the title and the number. So, if lines are parallel, then the same side interior angles add up to 180. So 6 plus 3 gives me 180, and 5 plus 4 gives me 180. Okay, so if we are told that the measure of angle 3 is 55 degrees, ooh, you can't see that. Make that a little smaller. 55 degrees. We want to look at which, which angles add up to 180 degrees and why. So we just looked at same side interior angle postulate. So I know that angle 3 and angle 8 add up to 180. That's the same side interior angles. If I look at angle 6 and angle 8, those are vertical angles. So angle 8 is congruent to angle 6. So then angle 3 and angle 6 also add up to 180. That same side interior and vertical angles going on there. Um, oops. I also know that if they can form a straight line that they add up to 180. So if I look at angle 3 and angle 2, that makes a straight line. And angle 3 and angle 4 make a straight line. So I know that angle 3 and angle 2 are added up to 180 because either you can say they're supplementary, they make a straight angle, they're a linear pair, and also the same thing goes for angle 3 and angle 4. Straight angle. Okay, two more theorems again. Again, don't write the paragraphs. You can if you really want to, but... Alternate interior angles theorem. So if two lines are parallel, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. So 4 and 6 are congruent. 3 and 5 are congruent. And then we have the corresponding angles theorem that says if the two lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. So 2 and 6 are congruent. 3 and 7 are congruent etc. Here is the proof of the alternate interior angles theorem. We, I'm going to cross these out so you can't read them as I go through. Oops. Um, we cannot use the alternate interior angles theorem during this because that's what we're trying to prove. So we are given, we are told that L is parallel to M. So that's our given. Then I can see that angle 3 and angle 4 add up to 180. Why am I allowed to say that? Because they are supplementary angles. They add up to 180. They're supplementary angles. I can see that angle 3 and angle 6 add up to 180 because they are same side interior angles, and we just learned that postulate. Then... We're going to use something, you should stick this in your note, called the transitive property, which says if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. So I can use the transitive property because if the measure, if this is equal to 180, excuse me, if this stuff is equal to 180 and this stuff is equal to 180, then they must both be equal. So we set them equal and we use the transitive property for that. Then if I subtract the measure of angle 3 from both sides, I get that the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 6. So that's using, you can just write subtraction, they write subtraction property of equality. 
And then I'm allowed to say that the measure or that angle four is ang is congruent to angle six, and that's by the definition of congruence. In proofs, if you don't know what to do, just start writing out what you know. So you could start writing out that the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four equals 180. And you could say angle three is equal to nope, angle three. Oops, plus angle 6 is also equal to 180. And angle 4 is congruent to angle 6. Although in this case I can't use that yet because I can't use the alternate, alternate interior angles there. But if you're not sure what to do during a proof, just start writing out what you do know. And then see if you can piece it together. Okay, here's a proof for us to do. I'm going to wipe out this stuff so we have some room. I'm going to keep the given. We're going to use this same picture that they give us with their example proof, but we are going to try to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 7. Let me finish wiping that out so we have some room. Okay, that's pretty good. What? Second. Okay. So, let me get a little smaller. There we go. I still have the given. I'm still told that A is parallel to B. Eventually, down here, I want to be say that be able to say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 7. So, let's start looking up here. I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. That's same side. Oh, excuse me. That's um, corresponding. Sorry, need to make sure we already did that one. That says corresponding angles are congruent. I also know that angle 5 is congruent to angle 7 because that's vertical angles. Let's see if I can just use that. So the second thing I can write down is that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5 and I'm able to say that because they are corresponding angles so corresponding angle theorem then I can say that oops, angle 5 is congruent to angle 7 and that's vertical angle theorem Then I'm allowed to jump right to angle 1 is congruent to angle 7 using the transitive property. Because if angle 1 is congruent to angle, oops, that was bad, congruent to angle 5, which is congruent to angle 7, I could say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 7. And that would be our proof. And there's your homework.